Yes, I'm, I'm told that the public officer's law existing penalties are up to forty thousand dollars. But that, I, I hesitate okay. to say I'm, I, and I. One of my deficiencies is I'm not an expert in sanctions in the public officer's law either. What Thank, I can tell thankfully, you, thankfully, right? <laughs> beg your pardon. Thankfully. Thankfully, yes, and I hope not to be an expert. Mr. Um, Levine, why do you rise? But I'm sorry. I think that it's um, cru critically important for all of us in this discussion uh, to uh, be aware that the Legislative Ethics Commission found a violation. Mr. Levine, you of, have to ask a question if you're well, going to. Are we? A, may, will the speaker yield? I'm um, delighted. Thank it's, you. Although I think Mr. Goodell. I think it's Mr. Mr. Goodell's Goodell. time. Right, and Mr. Goodell, will you give me 40 seconds? A hundred thousand that, uh, dollars. That's one tenth of my remaining uh, time, Chuck. A hundred thousand dollars fine. Let me just finish it, and I will come for, back. Uh, for one of the members, Mr. Levine, Mr. Goodell, Mr. Member. Levine, it Mr. Has, Levine, Mr. Goodell will not yield. But thank I you. I apologize, Mr. No, thank Goodell. you for that information, Mr. Levine. Um, <laughs> great job in using the forty seconds, anyway. <laughs> One of my most skilled colleagues on, on the bill. On the bill, sir. Uh, I think this legislature benefits from people who bring a wealth of experience to this floor, including individuals that are successful in the private sector. Uh, I have benefited, as I know all of you have benefited, from the comments of our colleagues who have direct experience in different areas. And I think it's a mistake to say that the only ones who can serve in this legislature are those who don't earn very much money in the private sector. That's a mistake, my friends. It's not unethical in the American way of life to work extra hard and earn outside income. That's not unethical. We already prohibit any conflict of interest. That's clear. That's unethical. But taking on two jobs, working very hard, putting public service as part of your life, that is not unethical and never should be. We should encourage people who are successful to run for public office. We shouldn't make it illegal. This bill says if you're an attorney, as an example, and one of your clients is involved in a terrible accident and you represent them, wait, you can't represent them because you might be successful enough that you would violate the law when you got your fee paid. Think about that. So a client comes into me, I say, you know, you've got a great case, really sorry about what happened love to represent you. I've represented your family and you for 30 years, but your case is too good. I can't represent you in this automobile accident because you might be too successful. Really? That's unethical? Let me tell you, in my business, we have a rule that says we have an obligation to represent our clients zealously within the bounds of the law. That means we have an ethical obligation to help them the best we can. But this bill says if we're too successful, we'll be violating the law, facing up to 100000 in fines, apparently, or more. So I don't buy that basic concept that being successful in the private sector in some way disqualifies you from serving the people of the state of New York and sharing your expertise with all of us. It's the wrong way to go. Now, I've already voted to close the LLC loophole. And I'm happy to vote for the other components of this bill. But I cannot and will not support a position that says anyone who's successful in the private sector, including my last or my next to last opponent. I'm not willing to say my licks, the last opponent is unqualified to run because he's successful. I hope he's not listening too closely. <laughs> For those reasons, I recommend that we vote against this bill and focus our efforts in addressing what really is 
unethical. And being successful is not unethical. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Goodell. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Mr. Morelli yield for? Mr. Morelli, will you yield? Yes, of course. Mr. Thank Morelli you. yields. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Joe. Joe, this bill adds LLCs and uh, uh, corporate entities to the contribution limits of $5,000. Is that correct? Well, it, it conforms LLCs to the existing, to the existing aggregate limitations of corporations. That's right. correct. Was any thought given to putting those same constrictions on unions? Why are they not included in the limits? Yeah, this I, I folks have been talking about the LLC loophole, um, and our goal was to make sure we close that loophole. Well, that's fine. That's fine. But if we're going to constrict the spending of certain groups, why not be fair and include? unions as well. Why no thought was given to that at all? Well, I think, you know, and I'm, I'm not an expert on, on what a union can do. I know that they can provide education and information to members. Uh, I believe they have disclosure rules already as it relates to their political activity. But again, we were particularly cognizant of the loophole that exists in LLCs and focused our attention on that. But so another bill, there may be other bills that relate to what you're talking about. Um, I'm not no, aware of them. But no limits on unions at all? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on the bill. Uh, on the bill, Mr. Fitzpatrick. You know, the, the, the problems with ethics that we've had, that we've seen here in this chamber and in the Senate over the last few months uh, have brought us to this point where we need to show the public that we care about ethics and we want to improve them, et cetera. And the bill does some good things in that regard. But the majority in this House has to show the public that it wants to do something. But it would be foolish for that majority to give away an advantage. And what, what, I mean, what I mean by that is that, look, the LLCs, the corporate entities, fine. I'm all for putting limits on those if we're fair about it. And to be fair, we must put those same limitations on unions. This bill does not do that. And quite frankly, I understand. We all understand the game of politics and the business that we are, we are in. Mr. Tatone, why it, do you rise? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to yield. Mr. Tatone, Mr. Fitzpatrick, would not yield. Thank you. I'm sorry. It would be foolish for that majority to give away an advantage, and the advantage that the majority in this house has are the unions, and the LLCs and the corporate entities. Fine. I'm all for putting limits on them if you're fair about it. And you put limits on unions. For that reason, and the same reasons that were uh, spoken by the previous speaker, I also believe we should not vote for this bill. Thank you. Mr. Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Mr. Morelli yield? Mr. Morelli, do you yield? Yes, sir. Mr. Okay. Morelli will yield. Thank if you, you allow him to take a drink of water. No, yeah, please, please do. <laughs> we need to be hydrated. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, I'm, I'm, uh, when, when it comes to the funding piece, I'm, I'm kind of a babe in the woods on that, so I, I need just a little guidance and some help. And I, I understand the, the LLC loophole and that we're taking their, their contributions and limiting them, limiting them in aggregate to 5000 a year or, or election cycle, I guess. So I, I guess my question is in the C, and this, in my mind, comes from some of our discussions on fair funding in, in elections, fair campaign funding, it seems to be an offshoot of that, of that uh, uh, spirit. But what I don't get, and this is where I need help, is so, so I guess we're limiting LLCs because there's a lot of them, and if they're giving a fair amount of monies, that, that gives a, an unfair advantage to certain candidates. Is that our premise? Well, I think the, I think the, the theory behind this is, is this, that we created LLCs to essentially to extend protections to LLCs in the same way that we provide protections to corporations, but extended that now to partnerships, as I recall the LLC law when we uh, created it. But, what, but one of the constraints that's inherent on in corporations is this is $5,000 aggregate spending limit or contribution limit within the course of a calendar year. That same uh, limitation, however, does not, um, does not constrain LLCs. So what has happened is LLCs have continued to, to sprout up to be able to provide basically uh, or, or don't have the aggregate limit so they can give 
essentially unlimited amounts of dollars in the aggregate, whereas corporations are limited. So here's, here's where I'll need some help because, again, when it gets to the issue of, of financing of this, of this type, I, I think of other creatures in the forest, so to speak. So we have, we have PACs, we have super PACs, we have uh, unions, we have other, other entities We have other entities donating, and I'm not sure how. So, so back to the issue of if our goal is to constrain abuses and to, to make sure there's fair funding, how, how does the LLC limitation, how does that, in, in, in sum, how does that relate to funding by PACs or funding by unions? How, are, are we effectively limiting them as well, or, or is there a need to limit them? I, I don't know. I'm well, asking. Yeah, again, there's been so much discussion about the abuse of LLCs that that's what we focused on. Obviously, Unions have limitations of what they can give to an individual candidate. That's the limitation we all operate under. But this is specifically because what you have effectively done is created LLCs that don't have an aggregate limit. And an individual could create multiple LLCs and not only not have an aggregate limit, but as part of their partnership, their individual contributions and their contribution through the LLC is not recorded. So what this seeks to do is not only do the aggregate limits, but it essentially says if Joe Morelli is a 25% owner of an LLC and that LLC contributes $1,000 to Peter Lopez's campaign, then 25% of that, or $250, should be designated as a contribution from Joe Morelli, which would limit me in terms of the contribution I might make to you in excess of $250, but up to whatever our limitation is, which I think is, is north of $4,000. Okay, so I'm still struggling a little bit. Thank you. So, so if, we, if we're, are there aggregate limits on unions or PACs? Uh, well, I, I don't know the answer to that. I know that certainly under the um, Supreme, United States Supreme Court um, rulings, there are some limitations on our ability to even constrain PACs, et cetera, in terms of aggregate limits. Right. So, so again, when we look at and I'll, I'll, I'll hit unions, what about local union chapters? Are they different from state unions? Do they have a different identity? A different? Um, are, are they individually standing as well? Or are they kind of like? I'm sorry. I, I just apologize. I couldn't. No, that's respond. okay. A little background noise. Um, so, so again, I think our goal collectively, and I, I think it's a good goal, is we're we're trying to constrain uh, funding and to make sure that funding uh, that. that Funding doesn't dictate the candidate, per se, that, that there's some balance between funding and the, the, the ability of a candidate to run and hold office. And I think that's our goal here with, with this legislation. So I, I'm just trying to capture who else is out there, and, and should we be looking or do we need to be looking at others who are also engaged in this arena and their limits and how they contribute and where they contribute. For, for example, I'll go back to the PACs. We have PACs. We have Super PACs. We have Son of PAC. We have Son of Mighty Joe PAC. We have, we have unions, we have local union chapters. Uh, how does that fit and how does that balance with what we're trying to accomplish here with the LLCs? I, I don't know and I'm looking for some guidance. Well, I think, I, I think that the point as it relates to unions, um, you and I can't just start a union. I mean, there are there's, you know, sections of law that relate to formation of unions and, and uh, uh, collective bargaining and there, there's a whole series of law that relates to that. But you and I can create LLCs and we could create unlimited numbers of LLCs to allow us to use personal wealth to well exceed not only the aggregate limits, but individual limits as it relates to a candidate. So if I were of, of a, uh, if I had an interest in doing this, I could create 10 LLCs and have each one give the max contribution to a single candidate, right. even though I'm constrained personally from being able to give unlimited amounts. So sure. I think the union rules are, are, are so, com completely separate. And I also say as it relates to some of the super PACs, we are constrained, although there is additional legislation right. on the topic, but there are some constraints uh, because of the United States Supreme Court rulings. Yeah, and I, I guess it gets back to, and this gets back to the, the, the fair, fair elections thrust is, again, to me, there, there seems to be, all of us seem to be grappling with hard money, uh, direct cash donations versus in-kind services versus uh, distributing literature versus campaigning door to door. And, and so I, I guess part of our challenge is with the LLC, and I follow your point, is, is to limit proliferation. Is, is there some effort, do we collectively have a plan to try to limit funding collectively 
So, so what's fair is fair. So, so dollars in, in one arena are, are not overmatched by dollars in another arena. So if LLCs are a problem, are we balancing that with PACs? Are we balancing that with unions and union chapters? How are we what are we accomplishing? Are we trying to provide some balance here? Well, I think we are, and, and, and I would say, again, within the constra constraints of the Citizens United suit with the United States Supreme Court, have looked for ways to try to limit the undue influence uh, of, um, of those organizations that we believe have too little disclosure. And uh, frankly, I have seen uh, just locally uh, races that have had uh, significant amounts of outside um, dollars come in that are unreported, that are not disclosed. Uh, and yet we have these constraints under the U.S. Supreme Court decision. But to your point, I think we would all like to make sure that there's level playing field, even though you have distinctly different types of organization. You've raised unions, which have a, a whole different structure um, and can't be easily created uh, in the way that an LLC can, nor can a C corporation or a subchapter S not as easily as an LLC. And I think the, the kinds of abuses we've seen by LLCs are widely acknowledged, and that's really what we've attempted to focus on here in this legislation. Thank you, Mr. Morelli. Mr. Speaker, on the bill. On, on the bill, Mr. Lopez. So I, I understand that we have different versions in each house. We have a version uh, addressed by the governor. And, and ultimately, we have to move forward. We have to, to make some progress. But I, I, I've been encouraged to hear some of the dialogue uh, be, between uh, our colleagues here. Um, there's more to do. So my hope is that this bill is just a warm-up act, that, there is, that we will talk about term limits for leaders, that we will have some discussion on returning campaign funds upon conviction, that we will at some point uh, have a law, a new statute, that talks about failure to report corruption. And ultimately, the piece that we've heard much, uh, much about, uh, ultimately forfeiture of pension for someone co convicted of a felony. So, my belief and premise is that all of us are sensitive to this issue. This bill is a manifestation of that. The Senate has their version. The governor has their version. But I think there are elements in here, or elements that are missing, that I'm hoping that this House will, will move forward with, because it's not about us, folks. It can't be about us as individuals. It can't be about us fearful of protecting our benefits, our jobs, our pensions. It has to be an issue of restoring confidence to the people who have elected us, who have lost their confidence, who have seen their ability to, to trust their elected officials shaken by the conduct of colleagues who have been right next to us in this chamber. So none of us here are here to cast stones, but all of us are here to make sure that we provide parameters and a bright line test for what's accept acceptable and what's not. So my premise again is we are on a path here that's a, a good path. But my hope is that we will, we will be more aggressive because the public expects more from us. So I will be supporting this legislation, but I'm very hopeful that this chamber will be, bring back additional measures that can be replicated in the Senate and brought to the governor that will help restore public confidence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Ms. Gaylor. I rise just to talk on the bill. Um, my colleagues have offered a lot of critiquing of this legislation, but I feel it's a really good, positive first step for us to take today. And I believe in pension reform. I believe in changes in pay to play. Uh, the issue of lobbyists and campaign people being one and the same. Uh, these are issues that we have to deal with, and I'm hoping that before we leave in June that we've attacked a number of these issues. But today, I think we're really getting directly at the heart of the problems that we had with our former speaker, beyond, and, and also issues beyond that. But it really addresses um, the amount of money that you make outside when you're not working, and you're making that money because you're using your name. And I think that's such an important part of this piece of legislation. I also think there's a balance here um, because, you know, first of all, we have a lot of people run for Congress. Congress has a limitation on how much they can make an outside income to about, what is it, um, 
I think it's about $26,000 that they can make given their salary today. And remember, you know, they work, they work a lot more days than we officially work. We work all the time, but we officially are here just, just basically half a year. And there are a lot of people running for Congress, so, and a lot of talented people running for Congress, so, so they haven't seemed to have had a problem with limiting the outside income. And I think the fact that um, the governor has proposed our limitation to be 15%, which on a 79.5 salary comes to about $12,000, and that, that is just, um, I, I think, very, very limiting um, in response to some of the questions that we've heard here. I don't, I'm a full-time legislator, so I don't have any of this, but, but there are some people that do have outside income. But as a matter of fact, I think when we looked at the number of people with outside income, it's probably very limited in this House because being a New York State Assembly person or a senator is basically a full-time job even though we have a part-time label. So um, I, I just think that as people think about running for our office, they're going to have to make a choice. They're going to have to decide whether they're going to limit their outside income just as we've had to make a choice whether we want to go to Albany every Monday and get on the thruway and spend five hours on the thruway and be away from our family. We've all made choices that way. And there are a lot of people that would like to choose to be in our seats. So, you know, I, I really think that we have, to, we have to address this issue of the trust of the people in the state of New York, and we have to gain their confidence again and this is, I believe, a first step, but only a first step, in trying to make sure that we've addressed the real problems that we've faced in this last year and really making a difference for the people that we represent. So I will be very positively voting for this legislation, again, hoping that other things will come along as we proceed through the next few months. Thank you very much. Mr. Rivera. I promise very quickly. I, uh, after listening to the last person that said something like, this is just a beginning in the right direction, uh, we got to pay the price for other people that have put their hand on the cookie jar, and we got to go through this painful process. Now, I stand up here and I wonder what does it mean for a young man who was raised in the South Bronx, was led to believe that if he study hard and he goes to school and he becomes a lawyer and then he becomes a member of the State Assembly and probably still paying for his schools, his tuition or whatever, and helping to pay for his son going to college. I wonder what it means for one of our particular members from the Bronx. I don't want to mention name right now. I wonder what it means. I wonder what it means a step in the right direction. Listen, I'm not asking for a pay increase. I have learned to the art many years ago of living within my means, not go above. And my entire family understands that if you attempt to live beyond your means, you run the risk of being tempted by all the temptation that we have when we hold position like this. So, and I'm not asking for a salary increase, but I'm gonna tell you something. I know that this is a step in the right direction. I'm just afraid that I, in the near future, I'm gonna have to stop paying the lottery so I can help my grandchildren pay for their college. In the near future, I might have to stop thinking about that I might want to go back where I came from, not Puerto Rico, but to drive in a cab so I can help pay the rent. Or at this time, since we don't have had not a salary increase in the last 16 years, I don't have the ability or the means because I'm not a lawyer. So this is not about me until, until there's a need for it to become me. So, until that day, if I have to go drive a cab this weekend to subsidize my in income, I'm going to do some. But my heart goes out to those of you who have worked so hard to see the American dream, to be told that because somebody put their hands on the cookie jar, 
you cannot now earn what you worked so hard for. So reluctantly, reluctantly, I'm not going to split my vote. You know how I'm going to vote? I'm going to vote yes, reluctantly. My heart goes out to you, my friend, Louis. I hope it doesn't affect you too much and your son going to school. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Mr. Murray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Mr. Morelli yield for a few questions? Shh. Yes, sir. Mr. Morelli, you yield? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm going to echo what, what has been said a, a couple of times. Actually, I think this is it's a step in the right direction, and I'm very hopeful it's a first step and not a last step. And I appreciate the effort going into tackling what's, uh, what's a, a very complicated issue. But um, I'll also echo some of what my colleagues have said in that I'm, I'm troubled with the limitations on the outside income. I, I'd just like to get a little clarification because I think most of the time, because we do have a lot of attorneys, I think everything is geared towards attorneys and we kind of maybe forget that there are other businesses out there. So I'll use my own example uh, as a private business owner myself. And if I could just get clarification. So it's my understanding that as a business owner, uh, income derived from the profits of a business firm, corporation, limited liability company, partnership or other business entity due to the member's owner interest is exempt from this. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. That's actually the only thing I needed as far as a question <laughs> clarification, so I'll just speak on the bill now. On the Th bill, Mr. Thank Murray. you, Mr. Morelli. I just need a clarification on that because I've, I've, I've heard other comments, and it's, it's been geared more towards maybe this is, is good for business owners, not so good for employees, or something to that nature. And I'd have to disagree, and I'll give this example. So if I'm, I'm the business owner, and, and uh, I own an advertising agency, and it's an S-Corp. So as we make the profits, that'll be income at the end of the year. So if I take a paycheck and I take it all the way up to the 77.2 and I'm paying taxes on that, well, at that point, anything over that, if I make profit, if I have a good year, if the company has a great year and I get profit off of that, I'm going to get slammed on taxes because I can't take it as a paycheck over 77.2. So anyone who is thinking that this is wonderful and all rosy for business owners, maybe not quite as rosy as you might have thought. So as a business owner, if I have a great year, yeah, I could get hit, I could get punished because of this. So again, I think it goes to the fact that I, I just disagree with the fact we should be punishing success. We should be punishing hard work. We should be assuming that that is somehow ethically wrong or, or we're ethically challenged if we work very hard and succeed. I've worked for the past almost 20 years to build this business up. It started in a loft of a rental townhouse apartment, and now we've got employees, and, and we do pretty well, and we've got people relying on this business uh, to make a living and pay their bills. So I work very, very hard to, to succeed. I have worked hard to get it to this point. And to say now you've got to make a choice, or you should be punished, or you should be held back. And I've heard one saying that we, we need to make choices, whether we want to run or whether we want to be a successful business person. I, I don't think it should be a choice. I think we should encourage both. I think we should encourage people to succeed and bring that success to Albany, to share, to share your experiences and, and things of that nature. So I am troubled with the fact that I feel as though we're limiting and punishing with the outside income. With that said, I do support the portions of the bill, the closing the LLC loopholes, the uh, working on restricting the lobbying activities and cleaning up the housekeeping accounts. I do agree with all of that. Uh, so I will be supporting the bill, but I'm very, very hopeful this is a starting point and not an ending point because I think there's need, that, as, as others have said, there's a lot more that needs to be addressed, such as the pension forfeitures, term limits for leadership, uh, more openness and transparency. And to be honest, I would just ask as we move forward, that perhaps we consider, rather than limiting the income, perhaps we consider having more transparency and openness on how that income is derived so that we can see where it's coming from rather than punishing success. But with that said, uh, I will be supporting the bill, and I do appreciate the efforts in moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Read the last section.